All right, so your bell work for today is what was an effect of Europe's population growing larger? So we're reviewing in two ways, just to see if you can remember cause and effect and if you can give me an actual effect. And then what do you remember from Europe's population yesterday? And feel free to use your notes. Once you're done with bell work and you've jotted down the objective in Canvas, um, come back and we'll start the work. All right, so we're on our second lesson of the unit. It's called Origins of the First States of Afro-Eurasia. All right, so let's establish our unit claim. We started this unit yesterday. Um, so this claim for this unit is going to be the main cause of early state formation was the emergence of urban elites. So as we go through this unit, this claim will make more sense and we'll review it. But let's think about yesterday with source one, when the um, excerpt about Yurik and source two, the war and peace panels, mosaics, I want you to take a moment and think about, do they support or challenge this claim and why or why not? So for you to, in, or, in order for you to do that, we really have to understand what the claim is saying. So it's saying that the reason or the main cause that we saw these first um, states form was because we saw urban elites. Urban means like city, right? And we talked about how these cities were developing. And elites, we're going to go over today, but typically an, an elite is someone who is above the others, right? There's the bell. I'm just going to leave it in here so you feel like you're at school. Um, so the main cause of early state formation was the emergence of urban elites. So was it these leaders, these people above others, that caused these states to form? So look at source one and source two. Tell me if they support this claim, if they like would agree with this claim, or if they challenge this claim. Do they go against what this claim is saying? It's okay if you're not 100% sure. Just give it your best shot. When you're done with that, come forward or come forward, come back. So let's go a little more into elites. To you, what is a social elite? What do you think a social elite is? Is it the most wonderful person on the planet, Tom Brady? Is it Justin Bieber, celebrities or singers? Kobe, may you rest in peace? Do you think it's someone like Ruth Bader Ginsburg? If you don't know who she is, she passed away this year. Um, you should look her up. Barack Obama. Bill Gates. Is it someone who makes a ton of money? So is it based on sports, entertainment? Is it based on things they've done in history or politicians? Is it based on intelligence or money? Is it based on just who you look up to? I forget who these are. Kodak Black and A Boogie, I think. Yeah. Beyonce, is it the queen? What is a social elite to you? A social elite to me in, his, in a history class really is going to be those people that have the money, that rule the people, and that are looked up to. So it's kind of a combination of all these people. Um, it's your people in power. They typically, because they have money, they have power. And because they have power, they have money. And that cycle kind of help is like a, they, those two go hand in hand, right? And when you have money and you have power, and we'll see this over and over again in history, that's how you rule the people, right? That people look up to you. They want money and they want power. Um, some of the words we're using in this unit, I'm not sure if you're entirely familiar with, so I just want to go over three vocabulary words. So take a moment and pause right here to jot down these definitions on your worksheet, but um, I'm going to go over them really quickly. Political legitimacy is a popular acceptance of a government, political regime, or system, system of government governance, I can speak, guys, that is accepted, right, to be a legit ruler, basically, to put it in simple terms. So you have to establish political legitimacy in order to rule. So you have to be accepted as the leader, essentially. For a surplus, that's when you have like more than what you need of something. So if you grow a bunch of crops and you're able to feed your family and you have some leftover, that's a surplus. 
Scarcity is the idea of the state of being scarce, which I hate when definitions use like the root word in it, but um, or in short supply or to have a shortage. So let's say um, you have a million people, but you only have 20 square miles, like you have a scarcity of land. Or let's say, let's go back to the crops. You grow crops for, to feed your family and you don't have enough to get you through to the next harvest and your crops are scarce. So take a moment, jot those down, and you're welcome to put them in your own words that um, are a way that you would understand. All right, we're looking at two sources again today. Source three is an excerpt from Catherine Eaton from the Ancient Egyptian Temple Ritual Performance Pattern and Practice. It was published in 2013. Although details changed over time, the foundation of Egyptian society was ultimately illiterate, that means like they can't read or write, classes of laborers and servants with more independent peasants or members of the middle class who together produced agricultural surpluses. So think too much, right, or more than what they need. Their labor, primarily in the fields, but also in mining expeditions, construction projects, bakeries, breweries, and in short, any endeavor involving hard physical work was required in order to keep temples and their divine estates running. The temples are where these social elites live. A major function of Egyptian, of ancient Egyptian temple ritual and religion in general was to legitimize the transfer of wealth that these men and women created to a very small group of elite Egyptians. On your worksheet, it has two questions, number two and three. According to Eaton, that's the author, who was responsible for keeping Egypt running? And were these the same people that became wealthy? I think my that got cut off. Um, take a moment, pause the video, and answer those two questions. This is a piece of art on the tomb of Mena at Thebes in the 18th dynasty. I want you to look at this image closely and tell me how does this image support source three? All right, moving on to source four. This is adapted from Harold Perkin, The Rise and Fall of Empires in History Today, published in 2002. He said, once the system of taxation or surplus extraction is in place, I'm gonna pause for just a moment, just because you guys are, my students are ninth graders, so you may not understand how taxes work, but when you pay a tax, it's like a portion of what you've produced in this sense, right? So as a teacher, when I get my paycheck, I don't get all of what I earned. I pay income taxes and they go to the government, right? So these people, let's say they're growing crops and they grow 10 rows of wheat. Maybe one of them is collected by the government or whatever, in this case it says, or surplus extraction. To extract is to take away. So whatever surplus they have once they feed their family could be taken away. But once the system is in place where the people know how it works and surplus income flows freely to the elites, right? Those who control the flow ensure that they are the ones to absorb the benefits. Military conquerors quickly turn their political and military power into status and income. Their military leadership roles rapidly become permanent roles of honor and their tribute, taxation, or control of the scarce land itself, there's that word scarce, for example, the rights to labor services, crops, or rent earned from it, also ensure income and accumulated wealth. So for source four, you have one question. It says, Perkin discusses the general trend of how ancient empires were created, right? We're talking about the origins of the first states. To what degree does Eaton's description fit this trend. So it's asking you to compare source three and four. Perkin is source four. Perkin discusses the general trend of how ancient empires were created. To what degree, so how much, does Eaton from source three's description of Egypt fit this trend? If you have to go back to look at source three, that's okay. Go ahead and pause the video to answer this question. All right, I want you to look at this image. How does this image support source four? Pause it and then move forward. Oh, it formatted odd. That's gonna bug me, but that's okay. All right, so I want you to jot down the definitions of primary and secondary sources. We went over them at the beginning of the year, but so many students struggled with this. So let's just refresh our memory. A primary source it comes from a person or an artifact present at the event. 
So if I was at 9-11 and I saw it happen and I told you about it, I'm a primary source. Or if I have a, an artifact from it, like a piece of the building, that's a primary source, right? A secondary source is a person or artifact that referenced a primary source. It came from the original source, but it is not the original source. So let's say I tell my child about it and then he goes to school. He's a secondary source because he got it from me and I'm a primary source, right? If the artifact was there and he and I give it to him and he brings it to school, that artifact is still a primary source because that actual artifact was there. So I want you to re-examine the standard of ER, which is source two from yesterday, those war and peace panels. What similarities exist between that primary source, those mosaics, and the trends described in these two secondary sources that we looked at today? So if you're, I know this is a little hard, this is where this pre-AP part comes in. Look at, again, the war and peace mosaics that we looked at yesterday. I'm going to put them up in this video, so don't you don't have to like get out of this video or anything. What similarities exist between the sources I'm going to put up on the screen and then the trends described in the two secondary sources we looked at today, Eaton and Perkin? So here are your um, standard of error from yesterday, your little warm piece panels. What similarities exist between these panels and what you looked at today? All right, and we are already at the wrap up. So use the sources to complete the following sentences. These are your statements of causation, right? So elite social classes emerged in ancient societies because, so what caused that to happen? We're looking at cause and effect, right? Elite social classes emerged in ancient societies. So, so what effect came from that? Lastly, because at the end of this unit, we're going to re-examine all of these sources and make a statement or a thesis, we're going to just quickly jot down, does source three support or challenge our claim? Does source four support or challenge our claim, right? And that's it. Um, you will submit these notes on Canvas and have a great rest of your day.